I've been really impressed with your comments and questions over the past few weeks. We have some really sharp, well-informed viewers on the vantage point. Oh sure, there are some trolls out there, but by and large, there are a lot of sincere people seeking information about where at least one line of their families originated. Because of your interest in finding out more about where you came from, I think we'll do a few more episodes on the topic of Appalachian families. Each of the names we'll examine today was requested by our community. In case you missed the previous two videos on surnames, I'll post links to them in the comments section. So today on the Vantage Point, we're going to jump right in and look at the origins and meanings of 11 common and not so common Appalachian surnames. I hope you'll join me. Let's get started. First up, Hutchison. Hutchison, aka Hutchinson, is a well-traveled name that derives from the French Ushan, a salmon fish. According to Henry Harrison in Surnames of the United Kingdom, the name was well established in England by the 13th century and in Scotland by the early 15th century. Bell points out that Hutchinson comes from the son of Hugh and was a sept of the Scottish clan Donald. A paper trail and DNA would be helpful in locating the origin of your line of Hutchison. In Ireland, including Ulster, Hutchinson also appears as an alternate form of McCutcheon in Houston. So it appears that there are multiple origins for Hutchison. Number two, Thompson. Thompson comes from the Hebrew name Thomas. In the Bible, the disciple Thomas made himself known as the one who doubted Christ's resurrection. But after seeing and touching Jesus' wounds, he explicitly acknowledged the divinity of Jesus. Today, Thomas is a common name even in France. According to McLeisick, Thompson is a recent introduction to Ireland, but it's among the top five most numerous non-Irish surnames in Ireland. It's common in Ulster, too. In Scotland, the name is more often spelled without the intrusive P. Thompson is most likely of English origin. There's always that chance, though, that a Thompson from Scotland could have reinserted the P in his surname. Number three, Wynne. Wynne is like a few other short surnames that have multiple origins or the possibility of them. Henry Harrison claims that the name is of Celtic or Welsh derivation, but he acknowledges that it was also an early Anglo-Saxon personal name. McLeisick says that the surname in Ireland is akin to the Welsh name Gwyn. To complicate matters even more, McLeisick claims that Wynne is a synonym for several Irish surnames that have GEE sounds in them. Wynne doesn't appear to be common in Scotland or Ulster, so in America and the Commonwealth, it is most likely to be of English or Irish origin. Number four, Shackelford. According to Harrison, Shackelford is an old English name that first appears in Surrey, England. Harrison reasons that the name comes from a place where shackles or chains were used to facilitate crossing a river at a ford. The name is not common in Scotland, Ireland, or Wales. So in America and the Commonwealth, the name was most likely introduced by English immigrants. Number five, Walmsley. Walmersley first appears in Lancashire, England in the 13th century. The name was given to someone who lived at or near Walmsley. So the name is toponymic. Over the next few centuries, there were some minor changes in the spelling. The middle two letters were dropped to match the name of the village. Deval. At the outset, I have to say that the D-E in Deval points to a Latin or French preposition. In this spelling, it's most likely a variation on Deville, which means of the city. It's not a common name in the UK or Ireland. If it is spelled with a D-A-V-A-L-L, -L, it's likewise French, but it means down the river or from the valley. It's amazing how even very similar names can have completely different original meanings. Number seven, Beverly. The surname Beverly is interesting. Both Black and Harrison agree that the surname was a toponymic associated with a place called Beverly in Northwest England. Harrison claims that the roots of the name go back to a beaver lake, pond, or stream in Yorkshire. Later in the 9th and 10th centuries, this part of England became a popular place to settle among Vikings. In 1374, a Scot named Thomas Beverly carried a royal letter of protection for traveling abroad. If you have Beverly ancestors, you might just have some Viking blood in you. Number eight, Cobb. In researching the surname Cobb, I was somewhat surprised by its Hebrew origin. It's a diminutive for Jacob, 
but the Cobb surname most likely originated in England. It appears in the Scottish records in 1479. According to McIsaac, Cobb first appeared in Dublin in the early 1600s. Today it's found mostly in England, Dublin, the Irish Midlands, and to a lesser extent Scotland. It's not common in Ulster, so it's certainly not a Scots-Irish name. Moore, number nine. According to McIsaac, Moore is an English name. Harrison traces it back to one who lived near a moor or was a person from North Africa. In that respect, it's like the name Morris. Moore is found throughout Ireland, but it's most common in Dublin and Antrim. In Scotland, some members of the Muir family changed their name to Moore. Clearly, a person with the Moore surname in southern Appalachia would need a paper trail to help locate where their line originated. It's not common in Ulster, so it's certainly not an Ulster Scots name. Number 10, Spence. According to Harrison, the surname Spence was first given to a French person who oversaw dispensing butter. The name arrived in Great Britain in 1066 with the Normans and was in Scotland by the 13th century. However, according to Robert Bell, the name in Scotland was adopted as a sept of the clan Macduff. Despite its Norman roots, it seems that Spence is as Scottish as the Norman-derived name Bruce. In Northern Ireland, it's most numerous in counties Antrim and Down. It's not common in the Republic of Ireland, so in Appalachia, it could be a Scots-Irish name. Number 11, Cochrane. The surname Cochrane is of Celtic origin. It means red allotment. It was first associated with the barony of Cochrane in the southwest of Scotland. The name's common in uh, Ulster and is sometimes used as a variant of Cougarin and Corcoran throughout Ireland. In the 1290s, the Cochrane family was probably an enemy of William Wallace, famous and Braveheart. I say that because Harrison claims that William de Cochrane performed homage to Edward I. You might recall that Edward I was called the Hammer of the Scots. He was William Wallace's foe and executioner. Well, friends, that's all I have for you today. I hope you got something meaningful out of our discussion. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you have any suggestions for future content, please make a note of it below. Keep in mind that I have 70 videos posted on YouTube. They feature a variety of topics that involve history and geography, while sometimes touching on a current event that should be seen through a historical lens. I hope to see you next time here on The Vantage Point. God bless you and yours. Bye-bye.